you gotta, gotta remind me, man. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna turn off my mic and my camera, and uh, it is now your floor. Thanks, Mickey. Cool. Thank you. Well, everybody, welcome back. This is my fifth and final webinar in the series, unless y'all want more and you have something you want me to come back and talk about. But I just want to say thank you guys to all of you guys that have come out week after week to tune in to what I got to talk about. <laughs> it's been so much fun to see faces, even if it's just a name, to know that people are out there and watching. Um, just like a shout out to people. So many people have messaged me since we can't really like talk one on one. They've sent me emails, messages, um, connected with me on LinkedIn. And I appreciate each and every one of you. It's so cool, like each week to see some of the same names like um, Peter, Nick, Kyle, Bob, Sean, some of you know, people that are not Rusty was on, I think, last week. So people that I might not have known otherwise, it's really neat to see these same names popping up. It's been really cool, like such a blessing. Um, so I'll just introduce myself. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, that haven't been on one of my webinars, I'm Mickey Woods with Mickey Woods Marketing. And um, I started out owning my own auto body shop years and years ago. Um, but I owned it for about four or five years and then the recession hit. So I was unable to hang on to it, unfortunately. But um, soon after leaving there, I was picked up by Valley Motor Center Auto Body, which, is, which was at the time the owner since passed, but the largest auto body shop down in the San Fernando Valley area, the LA area, uh, single owned, not, not an MSO. But um, so I worked with them for five years and then I went independent. So that's what I've been doing ever since and I love it. So for Valley Motor Center, it was neat because I was able to just focus on the marketing and sales advertising components, We're doing social media, website, doing, as you can see in this picture, I did nonprofit events, speaking engagements. So that was really fun, but it was neat to have the experience of owning a shop to bring all that forward into then working independent, working with shops across the country. Um, so now one of my latest fun things I do is I write for Body Shop Business Magazine and uh, most of my stories are cover stories. So if you see a cover story, you should check and see. It might be one of my <laughs> little fun things that I've put on there. Um, so that's been a really fun experience. So you'll see me kind of pop up uh, on Body Shop Business Magazine every once in a while. So, so far, for those of you guys that have tuned in, or maybe if you haven't, you're wondering what the heck has she been doing on these webinars? So our first webinar was we talked about maximizing your opportunity during this downtime in body shops. What are other body shops doing right now to be flexible and to do things different? And then what are some things you can be doing with all this time to be able to maximize what you got going on in your shop? So, and again, all of these are on the replay, um, replay on the Collision Hub YouTube channel and then also on the Mickey Woods marketing channel. So if you want to tune in or you miss something, then feel free. Then we went on and we talked about surviving the certification craze. Is your shop ready? Getting your shop ready to prepare for certifications in a nutshell. And then we went on um, and talked about marketing those OE certifications, which is super important after you spend all that money. And then last time we talked about battling the consolidators uh, using relationship marketing and how important relationship marketing is. And then of course today we're gonna talk about taking your marketing to the next level and that's mainly with um, digital marketing because we really haven't touched on that yet. So I'd like to talk about that. It's a very important part of marketing that sometimes people forget about, especially in shops when we're just busy with our day-to-day -day and taking in customers. So first and foremost, with digital marketing, we're gonna talk about um, your website. We're gonna talk about SEO, search engine optimization. And then we're gonna talk about some ads, uh, Google ads, which are paid ads. And um, then we're gonna talk about some outside the box marketing and advertising ideas that are not one of those three that you might wanna think about um, especially during this downtime, I think it'd be important. So to start out, when we talk about your website, you want to think about it like, basically like your website is a map, kind of like if you're at an amusement park. So let's say you're the first time ever going to an amusement park like Disneyland, when you show up, 
you don't quite know where to go. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing. What are the hot spots and everything? So typically you get a map and you pop that map open. And then there are some spots on that map that have stars next to them. You know where the customer service booth is, you know where the best rides are and that kind of thing. So try to think about your website is almost like an amusement park map. When they get there, when they get onto your site, where do you want them to go? When they arrive on your site, you want to be the one leading them to where they're supposed to go on that site. Super important. So it's important to, um, it's important to be representing yourself on your website and you want to make sure that your branding is staying consistent. But uh, and most importantly, it's about your prospect. It's about the person coming onto the site. What do they need? What information are they looking for? If we're not meeting them and their needs, then off they go to somebody else's site. So super important to be talking about your website and the functionality of it. So first and foremost, we want to inform your prospective customer and we want to prompt them to take action. We want our website to be informative, but we don't want it to just be like some, oh, great information. Okay, bye. We want to prompt them to take action and convert them, right? And we do that by having clear calls to action on the website. And I'll give you some examples in just a minute about what those kind of look like. We also want to make it easy for them to contact your shop. Super important. I've gone on a lot of websites and found things that were really interesting and thought, okay, well, this is great. I want to contact them. I want to ask more questions or I want to purchase or whatever. And I can't find a freaking phone number anywhere. I can't find an email address anywhere. They just lost a prospect. Same exact thing. And I'm sure you've dealt with it on your end, but same kind of thing for the body shop. When somebody goes to the body shop site, okay, here's all the information but how do I book an appointment? Do I need an appointment? Do, how do I get more information about getting an estimate? So we need to make sure all of this is easy to find and at their fingertips. And then um, lastly, we wanna make sure that it's e easy to navigate. And those two things kind of go hand in hand. That's, we call it an intuitive design. So it's just, you kind of just know where to go when you're looking for things. So let me show you a couple little examples here to kind of drive these points home. So here's a before and after site of a website that my team created. So this was for Telus's Collision Center. This was their website's homepage before I got to my hands on it. <laughs> um, as we can see, it's just kind of basic. The font was super, super small, so it was hard to read. You didn't quite know. I mean, if you look at it, where do you click first? What do we do when we get here? Um, I don't know if you can read it, how good the resolution is, but up in the top right corner, it says restoration projects. The first tab was auto maintenance tip. So it's almost like, is this, a, you know, what exactly are they doing here? It says collision care experts. It just wasn't clear. There was, there's no guidance here. So let's take a look at it after we, pre we recreated the site. So what was cool about this, and while I'm talking through this, I want you to be thinking about your website. And again, this is really for any business, whether you are a jobber or if you're a shop yourself or whatever you are, look, look at this and think about your site and if it's kind of checking off these different categories as they talk about it. So as we can see, the one on the right, the call to action is where it says contact us today. So somebody can click on that um, contact us today button and directly contact the shop. Down in the bottom right, there's a chat. Chat with us. There's ways to get a hold of them. The tab up in the top, it's easy to, or the uh, navigation bar on the top, it's easy to read. You can see it's easy to navigate. Where do you want to go? So intuitively, a customer can kind of know, okay, what information do I want when I get there? So I kind of know exactly what I need to click up top. So it's it's again kind of the providing a map of this is what we've got. Here are some highlighted points you probably want to check out first, <laughs> right? So let's take a look at another example. And I hate to do things where it's like, oh, look at what you shouldn't do, but look at what you shouldn't do. I don't know this site and uh, it's not all bad, but for the purposes of the things, the points that we're talking about today, um, it's, I literally went on Google and just searched auto body shop. Some, I forget what town I put in. And I was just looking for a site where I knew where I could see it was hard to know where to go. So if you go to this website, you don't know exactly where you're supposed to click. There's text on top of text. 
there is a button request an estimate down at the bottom, but how long did it take your eye when you saw this slide to get down to request an estimate? I mean, there's a whole lot going on in this example. I'm sure you agree. So be thinking about your website. Is it pretty easy to know what you should be looking at when somebody pops onto your site for the first time? Then next thing we want to talk about is, um, well, first of all, we want to make sure that it's mobile op optimized, but that they're on mobile, that there's also an easy call to action. There's a couple ways you can go about this. A lot of people are searching or surfing the web, as they call it, um, on their mobile devices. So do you have a clear and easy call to action button on your mobile device? You can go about it a couple of ways. There can be like a call now button, like we've created for the Telesis mobile site. Or we can also do, and then there's also like a chat button there that you can see. And then there's also the, um, what I put on the Premier Coach mobile site, down at the bottom, you can see that red call button. So I love using this and I now, if my clients are good with it, I love to use this call button down at the bottom of all the mobile sites that I create. And basically, no matter what page you go on to on somebody's website, that icon is always there. Whether they scroll up or down, no matter what page they go to, it's always there. So the customer, your prospective customer, can always have an easy way to contact you. And that's a really great way to do it. There's never a question of, if you're on this site and you don't know how to get a hold of somebody, that's a lie. You, know how, you do know how, you just click the button, right? So think about it, do, does your website or do your clients' websites, for my jobbers out there that are working for body shops, are they, is it easy to get in touch with them? And then sometimes we don't know when we're looking at our sites if um, basically what, the, what our visitors are doing when they get there. How are visitors engaging on your site? So it's really important when we create a website, we, there are a bunch of boxes that we want to check. And of course, I'm just talking about um, different ways to, to embellish your site and making sure that it's easy and easy to function and easy to navigate. Uh, but then there's also the question of what are people doing when they get on your site? Are they actually following the map that you gave them? How do you know? And sometimes you think that you know because in your mind, it's intuitive and you're giving them clear call to actions, but are you really? So there's, the, so there's a tool that we use, which is called heat mapping, which is really neat. And it actually gives my clients actual metrics to be able to see what pages your prospective customers are looking at and what they're clicking on. So let me show you an example of that right now. And um, while this is playing up, I'm gonna answer a question from Robert. It says, does red not usually mean hang up and green to call? That um, icon is red just because of their color scheme is red and black. So it's red to pop on the black pages because most of the pages are black um, to go with the color scheme. But you can actually within the app that I use, um, it's called a plugin actually through the back end. you can color that however you want so that it goes with your color scheme that you're using. If you, if it was your shop and you wanted to make it green and that was something that you were questioning, then by all means we can make it green without a problem. Um, and then we can see if our clients are actually using that button or not. And uh, right now I can't use the heat mapping tool on that site properly because there's a pop-up right now with a COVID message. So the heat mapping won't work properly. Otherwise I could show you the amount of people that click that red button is off the charts, off the charts uh, on all of the websites that have that button. Super important. If So contact me if you're interested in putting that on your website. Um, so this is an example of heat mapping one of um, my client sites. So what you're looking at right here is their homepage and it's obviously really shrunk down, but they have a lot of content on their homepage. And I did not create this homepage. I do some other things for this client. And um, so I offered to do heat mapping for him so we could kind of dial his website in. He had already spent a lot of money on his website before he came to me. 
So what the heat mapping allows us to do is for the last 30 days, look and see what people are doing on that site. And it's like a rolling 30 days. So up in the top of the page, you can see where the red is. That's where what most people are seeing when they get to this website. And as it goes down through the colors, the yellow, the green, um, down into the blues, the dark blue down at the bottom is really nobody seeing that. And I don't know how well you can see it, but in the about a third of the way down, it says lose 50%. So the metrics I can see on my end are, we're losing 50% of viewers on this homepage right at that line right there. So they're basically, when a, somebody goes to this client's website, they're seeing whatever is in that top header, the main portion of the website, and what's down just a little bit. So we make sure that we keep their contact information above that, which is very normal, but people on this site aren't really scrolling down. So um, if they have information that they feel like people really need to see, we need to make sure that it's above that line where we're losing people. And, or we put something really interesting right before we start losing people to keep them reading down more. And I won't get too much into all of that. Um, let me give you another example of how heat mapping works. Um, here is uh, their homepage on a desktop, and this is obviously really zoomed in. And this is called the um, heat mapping for clicks. So we, we can take a look and clearly see for the last 30 days, and this is down right now because COVID, uh, but we can see how many clicks they're getting per page. And you can see the red is obviously where there's a lot of clicks. And I don't know if you can tell, but on the far right, there's a lot of red. Um, and that's actually the contact us page. So that's getting the most attraction within this 30 days. All the way on the top right are their reviews. So they actually have a page with reviews on it. And if you were on my call when we talked about marketing your certifications and I said, at this point in time, I don't want you guys spending a lot of money on doing SEO on certifications specifically, this is a really good example why. Um, if you can see again, up in the top uh, navigation bar, the third one in says manufacturer certifications. So within the last 30 days, no one has clicked that button to look into those more. Where they do look are down in the far bottom, you can see the logos of the different certifications. Now, the two months prior when things were much more normal, the clicks down in the photos of the certifications were way, way higher. We know, and I've been watching this website now and working with this client for the past like four or five months, and um, they were getting constant links down on the photos, but the actual certifications tab was not getting any, hardly any, maybe like one or something. So this is what I like to do on our end with our team is we look and see what is actually converting your people when you get there. And this helps us to be able to build a site in general to make sure that we know what we know what people are looking for, but then dialing it in for your demographic and your audience. What are they looking for? And then there's another option for the heat mapping. And this is basically, which is pretty cool. And, um, I wish I could show you an example of it, but this heat map tool actually allows us also to watch visitors live when they're on your site. You can see them scroll up or down where they stop, where they touch, where they click. It's kind of creepy <laughs> because I don't think people realize that this kind of software is out there, but it's out there and we don't use it for bad reasons. We're using it to help out the client. Um, but here you can see where they're hovering with their fingers, where they're moving, what they're touching on. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, one other thing you can look at is the Google Analytics. So if you have your Google Analytics set up, and if, again, if you need help with that, just give me, a, give me a ring and my team will help you set that up. But this is through Google and we can actually look and see on your website which pages. So this was set March 24th through April 24th when I ran this report. We can see what pages were being visited the most. And there's a whole lot of other information on this page, but it allows us to be able to see what are, what are your prospective customers actually looking at? What are they looking for? Because we don't want to be berating them with information that they don't care about, that we think is great, but they don't give two craps about, right? Um, so that's the Google Analytics account that you can set up in the back end. 
So that's some cool things that we have um, in regards that I wanted to show you about websites. And if it's building a website or maximizing your website, we can definitely help you. But definitely some things that you guys can be doing potentially on your end to take a peek and kind of give yourself a grade all on your own and see what you think. So um, at this time, just kind of want to open it up if you guys have any questions before we move on to something a little bit more techy. <laughs> um, give you guys a chance to just ask any questions or if we're good to move on, we'll, we'll keep trucking. Okay, so we will keep moving on. So before I get into the next segment, and I do have some of my team members on the phone call, so if you guys have questions and you I'm, it's difficult to talk about this kind of thing to a group of people because everybody's coming in at a different experience level. So I don't want to inundate, inundate you with a bunch of details, but I also don't want to talk over your head. So if you want to dive in more deeply, we definitely have the opportunity to do that. And we can have, um, you know, I can ask questions, I can pass it off to one of my one of my team members that's on the phone and we can kind of deep dive with you. Otherwise, um, you know, just let me know if you want to do that. But before we get into SEO and Google ads, I'm going to kind of show an example of what it looks like um, when you Google search something. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through this so that we're all on the same page. And as I'm talking, I haven't totally lost you and I'm not frying your brain. Um, so hopefully you don't have any questions. And if you do, just put them in the chat bar and we'll come back to it. And then um, here is a list. So let's say, so we had Vision Collision on the call last week and uh, they were participating. Yay, thank you. So because they were on the call, I thought, okay, let's, let's use them for kind of an example. Hope they don't mind because I didn't ask. <laughs> but um, they're in Cerritos, California. So let's say we're a prospective customer, prospective guests, and we type in Auto Body Shop Cerritos CA California. So this is what's going to pop up. So we can see our ads up in the top left up here. And then what it is over on the right side is just the bottom of the first page. And then we see some ads down here as well. So that's, that's kind of where the ads live and sometimes even in the map section. So that's where they live on uh, Google and ads also live and other places, if you'll notice when you're browsing websites and you get an ad for something you have been talking about or um, searching for on Google and all of a sudden it pops up when you're on a Home Depot ad and it pops up, you know, a restaurant down the street, you're like, what the heck? Those are also part of Google ads. Um, and then we have our map listings, which are the A, B, and C, and everybody wants in the map listings. And part of the way we do that, or the biggest way we do that is through our SEO which is search engine optimization. So Google is, our, is the main search engine besides YouTube. So we obviously need to maximize it so we can be up at the top of the first page because that's where ideally we want to live. What's tricky about this sometimes is Yelp oftentimes resides up in the top of your search engine results. So it's important that you guys are maximizing, like we talked about on another one of the webinars, that you're maximizing those listings on Yelp and then um, also on CarWise, those types of things, so that your information is populating, hopefully, in those, in those listings because those are the first ones that come up, whether we like it or not. Um, so the next one down, the third one down, we can see is Cerritos Auto Body. It's in purple there. And so it looks like Vision Collision has some competition for SEO being up at the top organically. And uh, Cerritos Auto Collision is the third and then the fourth over here up on the right. And then we have a couple of CarWise listings again, which is why I recommended to you guys to be making sure that you're filling out all that information, keeping that updated. And then we've got another shop and then we've got Vision Collision here and somebody else. So um, it's great because they're first page, which is wonderful, but obviously they ideally want to be in the map listings and at least at the top of the organic listings. So um, anyway, so as I'm talking about SEO, we're talking about organic, organic listings with SEO. It's basically from the Yelp on down that we're talking about. And you definitely want to be on the first page and the higher up on the first page you can get the better because as you know as somebody that searches for something you're not typically looking beyond the first page very rarely 
So let's talk a minute about SEO, which is search engine optimization. So SEO has a lot of different components that go into it that allows us to get to the top of the page. And the tricky part is, especially with Google, is they're constantly changing what they call their algorithms, which is what allows you to go to the top of the page or basically what decides how you get placed. And there are different statistics out there. You know, it's like, does it change hundreds of times a year up to almost a thousand times a year? Whatever that number is, it's crazy. Is at least at least one to like three times a day, Google is changing its algorithms on what they decide is going to be the oh. best way to do. That's crazy. It's mine. It just fell off. We've got somebody's on. If you guys can make sure that you're on mute, please. I got it. Yeah, I got Thank it. I'm playing, um, I'm playing mute police. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so anyway, so Google, because it changes its algorithm so often, you it's really difficult to stay on top of, so you really want to have a professional on your side helping you out with something like this. Um, and you can do this kind of thing for fairly inexpensive. Back in the day, SEO was, I mean, people were charging thousands and thousands of dollars, especially for body shops. The only work in our core market we're not trying to do body work for people that are hours away they're not looking to bring their cars to us and we're not looking to tow them to us unless we're super desperate so um seo should not be super expensive uh, like for our team plans start like around 500 dollars. that's where you should be looking to price wise for things so in regards to seo and google ads um, people are like, what do I do? Do I do Google ads? Eh, Google ads are a waste. Do I do SEO? Eh, that's a lot of money. I don't want to do it. But think about it this way. Um, in, for, in terms of both, you know, they're both like running a race. And for SEO, uh, SEO is constantly running the race. It's something you always want to be doing because first of all, Google is always changing its algorithms. So you could be great like we were just looking at that one shop was at the top of the page. If they stop doing SEO and Google starts changing its algorithms, boom, 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 they're going to start popping down. And part of the Google algorithm is to be keeping up to date with your listings and your website and all this other kind of stuff. So you have to stay on top of it. Plus you have all of this competition coming in that's competing with you on all of these keywords, which are the keywords that you're using, like the auto body shop, like we were just using in that last example. So if you're not participating and putting your bet, best foot forward at all times, you're going to get knocked out. And we can see on our side with my team, you can watch your rankings in Google and they fluctuate. And part of it is algorithm and part of it is competition, but that's why you've got to keep at it. Um, now is a really good time if you haven't been doing SEO, if you have the money financially to be able to do it, now's a great time because the people that don't have the money, that's one of the first things that they cut just because financially they got to cut money. So you'd be able to pop up pretty quickly. If you don't have the money, it kind of is what it is. You may, we're going to make the best of it. And then you can start later and then you join in the race with everybody. Um, but it's definitely something that you want to think about doing and keeping it ongoing, not just do it once. SEO is not one of those things. Uh, I had a client a long time ago and he was like, well, Mickey, we are A in the maps and now we're the top one and two spots of the organic listing. So we're good. We don't need to do SEO anymore. And it was like, no, <laughs> no, you don't just arrive and then you're done. Okay, good. Next. It's you, uh, you arrive and you got to fight for that spot because others are coming for it. Um, especially when we're talking about like consolidators and things like that. I mean, their, their SEO right now is not very good. Thank God. So we can capitalize on that, but I have a feeling that they're going to start dialing that in. So again, right now is a great time to get on top of that. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to give you guys some examples. And like I said, if you have any questions about this, I've got my SEO team manager on the line so he can ask, answer any questions. If you want to get some super techie answers that you feel like I'm not giving you, we can totally do that. Um, but first and foremost, you want to make sure your website is mobile friendly. Google will ding you. They will penalize you if you do not have a mobile friendly site. You guys have probably heard this before. So here's an example of a desktop site versus a mobile site. So it's a little bit different. 
Um, sometimes mobile sites are totally different. It really depends on how the desktop site looks and then making it functional and easy to use for your mobile guests. Uh, and that's really important for, for all businesses, not just body shops. And then another example, uh, actually to check to see if your website is mobile friendly, if you don't know, well, first and foremost, if you look it up on um, your smartphone, <laughs> you'll be able to tell typically whether it's mobile friendly. Things will either be easy to see or they'll be too big and you have to zoom out or zoom in. On a mobile site, it should be nice and clear and easy to see. But an easy way to check if you're not going to look on your phone is you can tip like realistically type in like I did. This is a screenshot of my own computer. Is my website mobile friendly? And there's a little spot right there. You can type in your website address, your URL, and then you just click the button run test and it will tell you if it is or if it isn't. If it is awesome. Google is not going to penalize you. If it's not, you need to check your contract with whoever created your website. If it's in there that they were supposed to make sure that it was mobile optimized, make sure that they do that. Or you can always call myself and my team and we can get your mobile site up for you and working. But you definitely, definitely, especially in today's day and age, have to have a mobile friendly site for, you, for people to even consider you when they're shopping. The next thing you wanna make sure that you have um, is an SSL certificate, which is like a security certificate. And now Google penalizes you if you don't have one of these bad boys. So for you to check your website is you go up to the top when you've typed in your URL, your website name, up in the top left, if there's a little lock button, you're good to go. Typically your website will, well, your website will say instead of HTTP, it will say HTTPS. That means it's secure. And now Google's even gone so far as to put that little exclamation point um, icon in like alert, you're about to go onto a website that's not secure. Nobody wants to go onto a website that's not secure. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> so make sure that your website is secure. And if, again, if you need help, just let me know. Um, one thing that I used to use a lot, it's really fun, it's a free tool. So you might want to take a screenshot of this or write it down or whatever, but this is, you know why it's so fun is you can not only check your website and see how different keywords are ranking, but you can check your competitor, which is super fun. So up in the top or up down in the bottom, it's called small SEO tools is the website and it's a keyword position checker. So if you can see down in the bottom here, there's a spot. So I did cerritosautobody.com because they were showing up first for auto body shop um, Cerritos. I think that's what my example was. So I'm like, okay, well, let's see how they're doing in other keywords. So you would just type in your domain, which is your, which is your website address or URL. It automatically defaults to United States and the little icon over here is for the desktop over to the right. And you can check up to 10 keywords at a time. I just did like the top five typical auto body shop keywords to kind of see how they were ranking. Um, and then at the bottom, which you can't see here, you'll just want to make sure you click the button that says check position, not the other one. The other one launches you into something else, but check position. And then it spits out to you after it thinks for a little bit, it spits out to you where you're ranking on Google. So we can see where they're ranking on Google and mine's going to be a little bit skewed because of where I am and how I'm searching, but um, we can see their top five for all of those keywords that I put in. That's incredible. They're clearly doing some SEO work on their end to be able to be top five for all of those. So anybody in that area has some competition up against the shop when it comes to search results. So this is a super easy, free tool that you can use. And um, again, I like to use it to when I was first starting just to be able to see, you know, what are other people now, my team and I use much more robust and um, I mean, the tools that we use are like, make your brain smoke some days, but this is a neat way for you guys without having those tools to be able to use it and get some simplified results on your end. So um, if this is what you look like right now, I apologize. <laughs> uh, and if you want to ask some questions at this point about SEO, uh, we can definitely, definitely do that. Uh, hopefully I've given you some pretty good information. And 
most importantly, I want to give you guys some tips, some things that you guys can be doing or at least checking into on your end to see how maybe you're stacking up. So are we good? Do we have questions? If not, we'll move on to our AdWords, which are Google ads. No, no questions. All right, off we go. And if you think of something, um, hang on to it at the end, we can answer it then, or you can put it in the chat box and we can answer for it. Don't be afraid. Or you can call me afterwards if you don't want all your business blasted online. We can, you can call me and we'll check it out afterwards. Okay, so um, next we go into our Google Ads, which are called ads or PPC pay-per-click. So again, these were the ads that were, these were the listings that were showing up at the top when we were mainly at the top, when we're looking on Google and we're searching for things. And um, today we've got Ryan on the call who manages our ads on my team. So if there's questions that you guys have, I'm sure he would be more than thrilled to get on the line and talk to you about all of it. Um, so let me show you a couple examples of Google ads that we did. So uh, remember I talked with you guys about um, certification. Let me back up a minute. I'm gonna talk about Google ads and then I'm gonna share this. So we talked about certification and we talked about not putting out there, um, spending your money on SEO and that kind of stuff for certification. There were other ways to market it. One of the ways that we worked with um, a, a shop of mine, which I told you guys, Premier Coach, which is local, does a lot of marketing for their certifications. And we use Google ads for them and it drove some great results. And we really, really dialed in what we kind of already knew and the information we had been getting from other shops that Tesla owners really are wanting to look for certified shops. And those ads were, we got a great return on those because Tesla owners were like, yes, eating it up, click, click, but they were actually um, coming into the shop. So it wasn't an expense, it was an investment. We were getting a return on it. So when ads are done well, they are a great money maker for you. So here's the difference. So when we're talking about running the race, like we were talking about running a race with SEO, it's constant, it's kind of a battle. With ads, it's kind of like the cheat that pops you right up to the top and it's like, bye suckers, <laughs> you just go right up to the top. Uh, the problem with it is the second you're not paying for those ads, you're just gone. So it's definitely something which is great. If you have something that you wanna show off, like for instance, you get Tesla certified, Talk to me about doing Google ads. It's incredible what we can do with those Google ads of driving new Tesla traffic to you. Something like that. You want to go pop right up to the top for some specific things. It's a great opportunity and it's money that's well spent. Um, the great thing about ads on Google versus like ads on Facebook, which I'm sure you guys hear people talk about, oh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. I mean, there's ads on everything, even YouTube. Um, Google ads really are there to meet your client in their time of need. Facebook ads, it's kind of just like scrolling and you, oh, there's a body shop ad. Well, I don't need a body shop in that moment. And a Google ad, they're only going to see that ad if certain keywords are put in. And our job on the back end is making sure that we have those keywords really clearly defined. So any prospective customer, if they're going in or, you know, guests are going in and typing in something in Google, that only for those keywords are we popping up. And what's cool about it too, is we can put in negative keywords. So if you don't want people coming to you for like a body shop, for body shop supplies, if you're getting a lot of clicks, you're like, oh, this is a waste of money. People are coming and looking at my website because they're looking for body shop supplies, we can then put in what we call negative keywords. So it really dials everything in. Another cool trick that we do with Google ads is we can use your competitors' names. And it's so like cheating, but it's not cheating. <laughs> There's nothing cheating about it, but it's a great way when you have somebody, let's say, um, Joe Brown's auto body shop down the street. He's your big competitor and he's getting a lot of work and you guys are fighting for market share in that area. You can start using those terms and his name in your own ads. If he were running ads, it would be smart of him to do the same. So it helps you to pop up on that Google search when they're searching for somebody else. And if you're right up at the top, oftentimes that's what people are clicking. What's right up top? 
let's click that. And it's kind of a no brainer. It's just reactive. Uh, the great thing too about Google ads is you can set your budget. So for a shop that may want to just start out doing a little bit, you can just do a little bit. It doesn't have to be this massive budget. Uh, Premier Coach started out with a fairly small budget. I think we were like, uh, well, I forget what exactly we started at, but then the more return he got, the more money he wanted to spend because now he's seeing the traffic, he's feeling the results of it. Or if he felt like he wasn't, then he could pull back a little bit. So it's nice that you can kind of push the gas pedal down or lift it up depending on your comfort of spending, which is great. Um, and then that again is something that can be done fairly affordable. And I know affordable is kind of like, well, what's your definition of affordable? <laughs> uh, but Google ads can start around $600 for something specific like body shops and then work its way up from there, depending on how robust you wanna be. So let's take a look at the a sample of the Tesla ad that we did for Premier Coach. And you'll get an idea of what this looked like. So what we did here is for Tesla, we showed up in the number one spot almost every time and there is a battle on our end to fight for you to be at the top of these ads and it's really about how well we create these ads, how high quality Google thinks these ads are. And that's something for us to worry about and not you, but it's something interesting to think about. So obviously we want to focus on the, the areas that we're serving. We want to have a quick call to action if you're on a mobile device, which you can see in that bottom one. If you have any specializations, we will put that in there. Like I said, any competitors. So it's really, um, it's really neat to be able to see how Google ads can really be dialed in almost like when you're at war and you just wanted to have the sniper tool, you know, that's almost like a Google ads thing where SEO is like broad and it's there. It's something you need to do. If you need to pull out the big guns, you do the Google ads and you just knock everybody out. So I know we have a lot of suppliers and um, jobbers on the line. So I thought, let's talk to you guys for a minute too. So you can have some fun with this. So we uh, did a keyword, we do keyword research when anytime we're doing SEO or Google ads, my team does a lot of keyword research. We don't wanna be optimizing keywords for things that your people aren't looking for. So there's a lot that goes into that. So here's just a little sample snippet. If you are a paint supplier of, in LA, we just did the average monthly searches surrounding LA. And you can see those top two, there's a lot of searches going on, you know, almost 10,000 for auto paint suppliers and automotive paint supply. But what's really interesting is you can see in red, it says near me. So there are a lot of probably shops looking or, you know, other businesses like ours that are looking for auto supply places but it's localized, which is really great for ads because ads can be super laser-like focused when you have that tight demographic and even SEO also to pop up at the top if we're really refining things for um, your prospective customer searches. So, um, and then the more defined we are, then we get a better high quality score from Google, which then gives us better rankings when we're firing those ads or for working our way up through SEO. So I thought my suppliers might appreciate this. So you guys can see there's a lot of people out there looking for um, auto paint supply, auto body paint supply, that kind of stuff. So I know that most of my suppliers out there aren't owning their own supply companies, but if you are, or if you have any sway with this, this is definitely something to look into to grow your business as well. Um, and then Google ads offers a, a few ways to access it. You can access it on the desktop, which obviously my team and I do, because we need to see all the metrics. But what's cool for my clients is they can go in and see um, on the app, on a Google ads app. So it looks like this on the bottom left. And then when they pop it open, um, for instance, I did, when I ran this report, I ran it for the day before. So this client had 12 clicks that day, which was a lot of clicks with 157 impressions. So it allows you as the business owner, some business owners just don't care. They're like, just tell me when it's over and get the metrics from my staff and tell me how well it did. And then I can decide if I wanna keep it up. Then there's other body body shop owners that check this thing throughout the day and they love it. It's a really nice tool that Google puts out for ads when you're watching them so you can kind of see what's going on. So I, I do love that especially as a business shop owner. 
Okay, so if you have any questions, <laughs> maybe you're like this guy, you can pop over. I don't see any questions yet about Google Ads. And again, I don't want to totally overwhelm you guys, but um, I do want to give you some information because it's definitely something that if you're not doing it, you might want to think about it. Probably right now may not be the best time if you, because I know most people's budgets are super tight but definitely something to think about for the future. Or if you haven't your pocketbook, my shops that have, that are larger, that have more cash flow are really taking advantage of these components. And, um, and then for those shops that can't take advantage right now, definitely something to think about down the road to grow your business uh, online. So let's talk about if nobody has any questions, I don't see any coming in yet. Um, so let's talk about some other things that are kind of outside the box, which right now, um, radio of all the things that I would never typically recommend any of my shops do radio. It's just for some of my clients. Yes, typically no, but for my body shops, no, never. But right now, um, radio is so cheap. They are literally, let me, let me show you. Okay, so this is um this is a, a, a radio station company. They have stations across the country, and uh, I've worked with this rep for quite a while for some of my other industries and those clients. And this company has two hundred thirty five stations. They are right now at thirty percent capacity, which means they're trying to liquidate seventy percent of their inventory. So they're willing to give away basically these radio spots. Here's why this could be good for you. And again, it's really just for you. For those that don't think that this is for them or they don't have it in the budget, totally get it. But if you are open and you're in a place where a lot of things aren't open, to blast it out there, even if it's just for like a week, a couple weeks, get some spots out there. Hey, we're open. We're here to help you. This could be something that you could capitalize on. And I do have a shop that is capitalizing on it. Last week was the first week they ran their ads, their radio spots. And they got all kinds of calls of like friends and past customers. Oh, hey, I heard your radio spot. And um, they got two brand new customers last week. Oh, I'm so glad you're open. I didn't know who to go to. Holy smokes. They, they paid for all their advertising. They actually were going to run for a month. They paid for that month plus a whole nother month if they wanted to run it for another month in those two cars they got in. So again, just putting information out there, not pushing, but think about it. Uh, this specific radio station, typically radio stations run 30 or 60 second ads. So typically you're wanting to do a 60 second ad to get the biggest bang for your buck. If you're in a larger market like LA, New York, or Chicago, a typical ad would cost you for 60 seconds $600. Holy crepes. Well, right now they're selling them for like 200. There was another lady at another radio station that was trying to, that I was chatting with, that was trying to get me to sign up for another one of my clients. Um, she's selling hers for 300, 350 for, and these are prime time spots. But um, this company, I've worked with them a lot. They're doing $200 for a $600 spot. Uh, if you're in a smaller market like Seattle, Sacramento, you're in a smaller town, uh, $200 normally would be for a 60 second spot. You can get it for 50 bucks. So now we're talking about real numbers where if you have a little bit of slush fund that you could put towards this, that you could throw it out. If you did five ads, one ad a week, let's say in the morning as somebody was driving to work on one of their news stations, that's 250 bucks. Are you kidding me? If you get a half a car, you just made up for it. So again, think about it. Just think about it. Um, their digital network is, so if you're talking about listening online, that's something different because there's such a high demand for people listening online because a lot of people still aren't in their cars. They're not giving discounts. But for those people that are driving around listening on the actual radio, that's where your discounts come in. Um, so if you're interested, hit me up. I will um, put you in touch with the, with the guys. I would recommend something like this because it's the cheapest option, but we can look and see what's available in your neck of the woods. But again, only if it makes sense, obviously, and we can talk about it and dial it in. Um, and then the last thing to talk about, which is kind of outside the box for you guys, is social media. And you know typically how I feel about social media 
And I was, I made a YouTube video and we have a little bit of time. So let me see if I can show it. Um, I, I typically don't recommend doing social media for my auto body shops. And it's just because most people don't have the time to do it the way it really should be done. So it's just kind of a waste of time. And then you're paying potentially an agency to do it, or you're utilizing somebody in the office, you're utilizing their hours. And is it the best use of their hours to be able to do it? Not unless you're doing it really well. So because I have a few minutes and I'm pretty much almost done, um, I'll show you what I think about social media. And then I'll show you what there is a shop doing and he is doing it the right way. So if you are going to do it, then you want to do it kind of based off of what he's doing, which goes back to the relationship marketing. But let's see if this will work. If not, then we'll abort. Um, but let's give it a whirl. So this is halfway through my video on social media for body shops on YouTube. So if you can't watch, if this doesn't come through, feel free to visit my YouTube channel and watch it live there. Because there are those people out there that are ringing your phone being like, Oh, hey, you don't have a Facebook page. You need a Facebook page. You call me, I'll do your postings, $2.99 a month, three posts a week, one blog a month, blah, 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 blah. Waste the time, waste the money. Or maybe, as it would be a great thing for you to do. I feel like a lot of owners, especially my body shop owners, you guys out there, you know, silly little guys, listen, you're reading about all these things and you go back to your team and you're like, do you guys know anything about Snapchat? Should we be doing Snapchat? Hey, guys, why is anybody talking about an Instagram? Do we have an Instagram account? Why aren't we doing an Instagram? Do we have stories? What is a story? I don't know. I keep hearing about these stories. And what's this TikTok my kids are talking about? We need to be doing TikToks. No, 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 no. Body shops. No. No. Don't do it. Erase all that crap from your memory. Create a Facebook page. You and I can talk about whether I think that you should develop your Facebook page or not. If you have the capacity to do it well, then you do it. If you don't, you don't do it at all. Just create the page, let it be, we can talk. People are gonna email you. They're gonna make you feel guilty for not doing X, Y, or Z. They're gonna tell you you need to sign up. And if you don't sign up, then you're getting left in the dust. And all this crap, don't buy it. Don't do it. Don't waste your money. I'm here to help you and tell you the truth about all these things. Okay? You're welcome. Okay, so that's my silly little, <laughs> that's my take on social media, my silly little video that I did. But if you are gonna do it, now is the time to start fussing with it because you have a little bit of extra time and you can have somebody in your office do it. And I'm gonna show you an example um, of a shop that's doing it. I mean, amazingly, when I was at Valley Motor Center, I was able to devote a lot of time to social media. And the way that I did it was exactly what uh, Steve Olson at Louisville Collision Center is doing. So he's posting things regularly. He's doing small little giveaways. He's partnering up with local businesses, encouraging local businesses to, or people to patron, patron, what, what am I even trying to say? Go visit those local businesses and support them. Uh, so he did that. Uh, let's see, did I have... Yeah, so then here's a, another thing he did. He had Tyler something something at High Note, who I guess creates these signs, and they did these yard signs, which just had some really great messages on them with his logo. And then he also sponsored the class of 2020 signs that some of you guys are now seeing in your neighborhoods. Brilliant. So uh, if you can partner with local businesses at this time, not only are you gonna get them to come and like pages on your, or posts on your page, but vice versa. So you guys start really feeding on each other. So if you're interested in doing social media, my team doesn't provide social media at this time. We focus on other things, but I've done it. I've done it very successfully. So if you run to run some ideas by me, go for it, but check out Steve's um, Facebook page and what he's doing. He's also on LinkedIn, but I really like you to see what he's putting out to the public on Facebook. If you're interested, if you want to kind of model something, uh, unfortunately all the Valley Motor Center posts have been taken down since the business closed or you can 
take a peek at what I did over there, but it's really, really similar to this and super effective. It's really the only way to do social media. So anyway, I hope you guys had fun today. As you know, my motto is a goal without a plan is just a wish. So whatever your goal is with digital marketing, let's get together, let's create a plan so that we can make it a reality for you guys and you can start making some money. Uh, and then you can contact me on Facebook, on LinkedIn or on YouTube. And of course, please feel free to email me. Thank you guys for all your wonderful messages that you've sent in the past after my webinars. It just makes me feel so happy because sometimes I feel like I'm just talking in this empty room <laughs> and nobody cares. And you're like, are she done yet? So I super, super appreciate all you guys. But I guess go. we'll open it up if anybody wants to say anything. Do you find yourself wanting to stop every now and then and go, are you there? Are you there? <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. that well? Yes. Yeah, just making sure. I just, I just want to know there's other people out there. Yeah. So you, you got any questions, if you, you want to type them in, feel free to type them in. If you want to just unmute your mic and ask, it's sometimes good to hear a human voice. That's kind of yeah. awesome. So usually when we get to marketing stuff, shops glaze over. Everybody wants marketing. It's always, every time we go to like a, a paint company's, you know, meeting that they have, whether it's like a MVP conference or, or whatever, you know, marketing, I need marketing. And then you start talking to them and it's like, <laughs> unfortunately yes i know and i'm kind of a weirdo so hopefully i at least keep your attention because i'm a little wacky but <laughs> and i try to give you guys stuff that you can be doing thank you kyle you love learning about it whether you do anything or not i don't care as long as you listen to me <laughs> Every, everyone can unmute their mic but kyle kyle, kyle can because kyle <laughs> yeah yeah but um, but very important, I think, right now, when you have this, I don't want to say downtime, and I'm glad some of you are picking back up, um, and hopefully we'll all pick back up, but one of the things you have to do is to make sure that you're you're thinking about when when the doors reopen, when, when the states reopen, when the when the when it all comes back, how are people going to find you? And online. <laughs> Uh, research already was popular. It's going to be more popular. How people expect to be serviced online, what your website's doing, what your website's showing, more important than ever. So use this time to, you know, maybe make sure you're ready. Um, sure, for sure. So uh, time, got a time change question here. I will handle that one in the chat room. Um, anything else there? Anybody see anything? Thank you guys for the messages. Super sweet. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. All right. Well, you know how to get a hold of Mickey if you need her. Um, and I, I think we got to sit back and I, I think we keep this going in May. I'm feeling it. Jason's like, uh, no, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, I, I just think the webinars, I think we kind of keep, keep them going, especially when the doors do reopen. I think shops are going to have a lot more questions in the new world. Um, so the thing to think about right now is, is what would the next topics be? So if you want to email Mickey or email me or, or drop a note um, and just talk about, well, Nick, yeah, we're going to talk about estimating, but you know, <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about estimating tomorrow. I'm actually going to write an estimate as you guys get a preview world premiere of the new Auditex estimating system. So, oh. um, yeah, I'm going to show you how a bumper becomes a total loss. News at 11. Um, so <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow will be more hands-on out in the shop. I got tired of sitting at a desk. I don't do it very well. Um, but anything on marketing, anything that you, you have questions about, um, was nice to see radio. I too, Mickey, typically tell people, yeah, radio, but you know, if it's dropping, why not? Right. Yeah. Um, and, and now's the time to test it. I'd rather test it on a $50 ad spend than a, a $300 ad spend. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> so, um, um, that's kind of, okay. So awesome. All right. Well, I think we're good to go. If you got any topic suggestions, for marketing, advertising, um, any of the things that you want to learn as a shop owner, anything that we haven't had a webinar about so far that you're like, would somebody, for the love of donuts, talk about blah? <laughs> I do love donuts. Uh, so uh, just let us know and we'll get it. We'll get it planned and get it out there. So anything we can do to help. All right. Everybody have a fantastic day. We will see you back tomorrow. We're going to start with Select. Um, and we will be uh, live out here in the shop working on uh, frame machines, measuring equipment. 
uh, fixture based systems going through all of that. And then this, that afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, we go with Autotex on the new Autotex Captor program. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.